I was born in Midland, Michigan on April 6th, 1971. I don't know, I think most kids, you know, there, there's always an interest in drawing, there's always an interest in, in, in doing things with your hands and making things, and, and I, I, in that sense I don't think I was too different. However, uh, I was encouraged uh, by, by both my parents, but mainly my father, to uh, pursue it. You know, this idea of like, you know, talent, of something coming from, you know, like God or something like that, I kind of, I, I guess I didn't really feel that. I kind of felt that it, it's really more about obsession than it is about talent. I think if you do something over and over again, um, you're going to get good at it, no matter what. My art developed first through, uh, I guess, really through photography, um, through portrait photography. And so I guess uh, I was always very preoccupied with representations of, of, of people's uh, faces, bodies, any sort of emotional connection that can be made from uh, a face. And I'm, I'm very fascinated by the idea of walking outside and looking up in, in the clouds and seeing shapes and seeing people. These are sort of uh, just my uh, ongoing series that I have of, of kind of, um, of I, I think of them almost as storyboards, as portrait storyboards of characters. I give them names and I kind of give them a bit of a backstory. Things are, are done in multiples and then I pick the best one. And the focus is really kind of on the emotional charge from a facial expression. I try to you know, put a lot of detail in there so it becomes very, very almost like revealing, like, you know, and I kind of like that aspect of the closer you get to something, the more detail is revealed. And I just, I, I guess I like the discovery process of that. This whole series, the abstract series, uh, you, know, the, you know, I call them my uh, cascade paintings. Uh, uh, I sort of developed them because I wanted to see how a simple sort of repetitive action can change into, over time. And uh, with the abstract, I think I'm trying to see if I can make sort of gestural marks that might contain some type of emotion uh, without them being literal. Vellum was quite easy for me to sort of get into, and then I kind of moved in difficulty from, from that uh, to the plexiglass and then to, the, you know, the canvas. Once I moved to the canvas, it takes on a bit more of a life of its own in terms of, of, of being a painted panel. There's still contour, there's still line, but it is involved now more with color and with background. The background starts to play more of a part of the actual sort of emotional charge, I guess, of the, of, of the piece. A lot of this work is, is, is dependent on how uh, the, the, the ink is mixed with water. So it becomes like a mixture. It's kind of like, you know, like a cooking recipe. And, uh, and I don't take notes on that stuff. I pretty much just sort of go with my gut. And uh, sometimes I get a little too watery. Sometimes it's a little bit too, too inky. In this particular case, it was a bit watery when I was doing it. And there were some splatter marks on the, on the areas of white that I actually wanted to leave clear. But then I thought, well, you know how when you're in school and your teacher, you make a mistake and your teacher circles your mistakes. And I kind I thought, well, you know, I can't make the marks go away, so I might as well draw attention to them, so I'm going to circle them. <laughs> so, yeah, basically I just sort of, I just loosely staple these up to look at them and get an idea of what's going on. And uh, when I need to do something else to them, I just basically take it off, lay it back down on my uh, working area here. mix up something appropriate like I'm doing now. So it's just, it's all acrylic based ink, so it, uh, you just add water to it. I'm gonna be going right, 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 let's say right there. I actually let it sit for a while 
And what I found with the acrylic ink is that um, it, 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 it tends to dry from the outside in. So it, it dries from its edges first, and then it dries um, towards the middle. And depending on how much you know, water or liquid there is, uh, you know, is the rate of, I guess, evaporation, you know. And uh, so a lot of times I'll make a mark and then I'll have to go do something else and let it sit for a little while. Um, in this particular case, uh, I'll, I'll probably let it sit for maybe like, you know, a minute or two. And then I'll come and I'll, and I'll take it off. So this is just kind of like, this is how I sort of wipe off the excess ink. And sometimes the canvas gets so large that my, my arms can't reach. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll basically, what, I would, what I'd like to do is I'd basically just take, you know, I take a paper towel and I fold it and I just kind of like lightly wipe the excess away. Um, if, if the mark occurs at a point in the piece that's too far away, then I just use my trusty monopole arm extender. <laughs> I'll just take it and I just kind of... I think that looks good. I need to stick with it. I need to kind of see how it evolves. I can't do a few and then drop it, you know, and move on to something else and kind of, you know, this is something that I really wanted to see where it could go. Um, and I still don't know. <laughs>